simple fact that we are in Edinburgh and as you all know, the fact it's not raining is very lucky. So <laughs> a wonderful start to the tour and we're better to start in here, the Melville Monument. So I won't be delving in too much to this gentleman just yet um, as I wanted to sort of set out what I'm going to be doing on the tour, what route we're going to be taking and what's going to be going on essentially. So little background to me, my name's Niall. I was a tour guide in Edinburgh for about five years and I'm currently based in London doing an MA course. And as part of the MA course, we had to do some sort of practical thing to do with history. And I figured tourism, tour guiding, that's what I know so well. And I felt that doing something like this, looking at Edinburgh's uncomfortable past would be very interesting. I know that there is a slavery walk that already goes on run by a lady called Lisa. And I'm sure that is absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, I've never had the chance to see it. So if people have come expecting to see something completely different, I do apologize if there is any crossover, but hopefully there'll be something new in it for you. And if there isn't, if there isn't, I still hope it's just uh, something enjoyable and information that you'll sort of relearn and things like that. Um, so the tour, the main thing that I was hoping to achieve with it would be to change the perspective of how we look at the city. Myself, when I was doing the research, even having been a guide for five years, there were moments and places that really shocked me. There were things that I was so surprised that that's where that is and that's what that is. Some figures will be more famous and well known. Some will hopefully be ones that you may not have heard of. We'll just sort of see what happens. And this is very much a preview of the tour. I work full time and study part time. I'm quite busy, so it's a preview tour, but hopefully if you guys don't completely hate it, I'll be able to do something with it in August that'll be a bit more polished. But any feedback, horrible, or happy I do really appreciate and you can be as honest with me as you like for familiar faces thank you so much for coming it's very sweet to see you all for non-familiar faces thank you far more for coming because you are not obliged by the bonds of friendship <laughs> so that's the preamble that's sort of what we're going with and the monuments that we were going to we're starting here St Andrew's Square with the Melville monument we will saunter over all the way to over there by the refinery <laughs> which I appreciate is a very modern looking building, but I promise has a much older historical past that ties into the tour. We will then walk down to the Walter Scott Monument and make our way across and up the mound. At uh, the top of the middle of the mound, I'll do a stop because it's a hill and we don't want to overdo it. It's not meant to be something that's fitness related. And then at the top of the hill at the mound at New College, I'll be doing some more chatting. And then we will finally work our way down to David Hume and over to the National Museums of Scotland. And that will be the end of the tour. So. It's not, hopefully not crazy in terms of walking. If anyone is struggling, please let me know and I'll see what we can do to try and make it work. Okay, that's kind of it. I think we should probably get going. So, behind me, this statue. A statue to Henry Dundas. We've got Dundas Street just over there, a very powerful and influential figure in Scotland's past. And with regards to our tour, trying to examine Edinburgh's connections with colonialism, with slavery, and particularly with India, the two main focuses of our tour today, he ties in very nicely. But I suppose I thought I'd start with the slightly more uplifting elements of Scotland's past that do tie into the slave trade. Namely, uh, a very famous case in the late 1770s, uh, where a man called Knight uh, won his freedom after two attempts. I'm going to go into it in more depth when we make our way over to Chamber Street into the law courts. But very successfully, he won his freedom after two attempts and it set an amazing precedent. The story goes essentially that this man was a slave in the Caribbean. He was brought over by his owner Macaulay and he was taken into Edinburgh to be used as a slave as normal. However, in 1772 in Somerset there had been a historic case in England where a separate, okay, on a separate occasion in very similar circumstances a slave had broken away from his owner and the courts had ruled that his owner had no right to his slavedom in England. So Knight hoped the same thing would happen in Scotland. Initially it didn't, however on the third attempt it did. Dundas was one of the main men who defended him and was one of the main men who helped him. Now, for those of us who know other things about Dundas, this may seem very surprising. It surprised me, I'll be honest, because when Dundas comes back up in the tour, it's not so positive. However, so we can start off quite positively, and it's this positive nature and concept that goes with the main reason why I think many of us, or uh, myself included, didn't know that much about Scotland's role in something like the slave trade, because of the role we played in abolition, because of very famous figures like Robert Burns, who I had meant to start the tour at, um, but due to Beltane I haven't been able to, but like Robert Burns writing poems with wonderful words like, if they're for honest poverty, that things he, uh, that things is here and all that, the coward slave we pass him by, we dare be poor for all that. For all that and all that, our tales of stew and all that, 
the rank is but the guinea stamp, the man's a goat for all that. Now I don't know the word for word translation, but a man's a man for all that is essentially trying to get across, aren't we all the same? Robert Burns is celebrated in Scottish culture as being somebody who holds up liberal ideals. Some people call him a socialist, egalitarian almost certainly. Surely he's a good place to start. He also wrote The Slave's Lament, which goes, it was in sweet Senegal that my foes did me enthrall, for the lands of Virginia, Virginia O, torn from that lovely shore, and must never see it no more. And alas, I am weary, weary O, torn from that lovely shore, and must never see it more. And alas, I am weary, weary O. We're a people with our most famous poet writing laments to do groups who are suffering and oppressed. Surely that's a thing to be proud of, you would hope. And so we do get this sense that Scotland was doing a good job. Frederick Douglass is the next figure I will move on to. Very, very important in the abolitionist movement in America in the slave trade. He travelled to Edinburgh in 1846. He gave a great many speeches and spoke incredibly finely of our wonderful city. Uh, he said things like, everything is so different here from what I've been accustomed to in the United States. No insults to encounter, no prejudice to encounter, but all is smooth. I am treated as a man, an equal brother. My colour, instead of being a barrier to social equality, is not thought of as such. These are words that we should be proud of, and I think it's fantastic that these words live in Scotland and Edinburgh's history. However, as I'm sure quite a few of you know, they do not tell the full story. This is the story you will find in the Scottish history books. This is the story you will find on Wikipedia. It is not the complete tale of Scotland and for the sake of this tour, particularly Edinburgh's role in both the slave trade and the wider empire. In order to explore it more deeply and get into a little more detail, I think we're going to take a short stroll over to what is now the refinery, but was a very different place in the 1800s. Follow me.